McGuire's welcomes you to the car craziest half hour on television. Join us now as we mix it up with serious car enthusiasts from all walks of life, across America and around the world, and discover why so many of us have become car crazy. It's a However you describe your passion for cars. Bottom Taya, great to have you with Thank us today. And it's been wonderful walking through your shop. But we want to talk about, you know, the heart and the mind and what's behind all this passion that you have. Just a, a real love of automobiles and anything that's automotive. Um, something I stumbled into as a child and it's just kind of stayed with me. And it, I think it keeps me young. Walking through your house and knowing you as I do, it's... It, it, this is a real passion. This is not a casual part of your life. You, you're, you're certifiably car crazy. <laughs> uh, certifiably, probably, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. My wife would agree with that. Yeah, I think so. Uh, this house, it is the most amazing car guy house I've oh, ever seen. Thank I you. have to tell you, I've seen a lot of, a lot of great houses, but uh, this one, this one takes the cake. It was an idea that I would had a long, long time ago when I was a kid. I wanted to build a house. It wasn't a car house, it was a house. And then as I had cars over the years, I always had to leave the house to go to the garage to see my cars. I said, there's something really wrong with that. Wouldn't it be wonderful if I never had to go out in the elements? I could, I could see the elements, I could hear them, but I never had to feel them. And so uh, we decided to, to incorporate the gallery in the house. And we still have a functioning garage where we store cars, but, uh, um, but we can rotate. Rose still hasn't allowed me to take anything into the bedroom. <laughs> we'll be right back after this break, and later we'll go car hopping across America. Car crazy! These are machines, okay? They're mechanical objects, and yet we have such love affairs with them. We have this emotional connection. It's just, I, I, can you put that into words? Help us, help us understand why that happens. How does it happen for you? Well, why does it happen? The best way to describe it is, uh, for me, is the experience that I get from it. Uh, I use all my senses. I can touch it. I can see it. When I start it up, I can hear it. I can hear the I can hear the engine. I can hear if valves are you know making a little noise, ticking. I can hear the muffler when I rev it. I can smell it. I can smell the gasoline, I can smell the exhaust, I can smell the oil, and uh, I can't taste it, but then you do get some, you know, sometimes you'll get some stuff in your face and you might get a little taste that way, but, the, you know, when you're sitting inside the car and, and you're, you're touching the upholstery, whether it's pure Corinthian vinyl or whatever, um, th that's what's nice about old cars. New cars have that new car smell and that feeling and they're, so, they're phenomenal cars. But I'm a simple person, and they're technically just too advanced for me. What I like is the old car, and what's really cool about it is, is even though you restore it, and you brand new paint, new chrome, new upholstery, new carpet, and it has that new car smell, the first time you start it and you drive it, the old car comes back. So it brings you back again. And that whole experience, going from car to car to car, and each one has its own personality. Yeah. Say, why do I love this thing so much? What is so neat about it? When you're at the racetrack and everybody's gone and the car's just sitting there and you're watching the light and you get up in the morning and you see the wetness of the cars and all that, it's, it, 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 I keep coming back to that one word, experience, you know, the, the, and, and the desires that it brings up in me to, to just get my hands on it. Uh, when I, whenever I get another car, it's almost like I go back to my first automobile. I'll come home, I'll park the car in the garage, and I'll have dinner, and I'll come back out and look at the car, and then, and then my wife will go to bed, and I'll come back out and look at the car, and then I'll go to bed, and then I'm, I'm really tired. I'm really tired because I've gone through all of getting the car and getting it home, and, all, and then I can't wait to get back up in the morning, and I run right back out. I'm looking at the car and, 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 and firing up to, to drive it. I mean... Uh, I still do that. I still do it. I still, uh, when I'm uh, in, at the point of getting a new acquisition, I still get really excited. The guys who have these cars that are three-wheelers or these uh, Model Ts, real, real old cars, even older than what I have, uh, they're absolutely, Not you know, now. yeah. And, and you know what you have to do. You have to kind of massage it. You have to breathe on it. You have to caress it. You have to do these little things. You, have to, you know, oh, I know, I didn't prime it right. I have to do this and do that. And the personality, you know exactly what it is. You know how to shift it. 
you shift too fast, you don't shift fast enough, you know, you, the, the, the revs, you just know everything about it, how to double clutch, make that yeah. car work yeah. to get from yeah. point A to point B. Yeah. Yeah. I, I like to think of driving as a ballet, and it's, it's myself and the road. I like to feel the road through the seat of my pants. I can feel the road coming up in the car, and I can feel myself drifting and shifting, and, and all of a sudden I get into this flow, and one of the games I like to play for myself is to see if I can get from my house to the, to the main highway without using my brakes. <laughs> I just like to use the transmission, and it's and I can do it. it right. I can do it. It's just a really nice right. flow, and, a and, and and then I can just kind of play it back and forth, and it's just really nice because you just have to have the experience to understand where you're shifting and how you're going, and then the car is making its noises, and then you're saying, oh, I think I'm over revving a little bit, and you shift real quick, and then you're you're kind of like just cruising it down. It works. We'll visit some more with Batamataya, so don't go away. We'll be right back, right here on Car Crazy. Folks, if you just joined us, we're talking with Bado Mattia, who is the owner of the Big American Dream, bad company who makes all the great commercials for the car makers. And so, talk about this fascination with Porsches. Okay, but I got to explain to you, I'm going through a change of life. Well, I know that. So, so it's kind of <laughs> hard. Yeah, but, but go back to but the Porsches. Porsches. Okay. Portion of your, Porsche, Porsches. Portion of your life. Um, I got my first Porsche, um, my wife and I. Um, I sold her car to buy my first Porsche. And I said, no, sweetie, don't worry about it. And I said, well, what do you want? I'll buy it for you. And she says, well, I want a BMW 2002. Well, I had just this desire, and I sold her Toyota. I bought my first Porsche, and then I bought her a BMW. And the story behind the first Porsche was interesting because we were living in a little house in Pasadena, and my mother-in-law and my wife were sitting on the back porch watching this idiot just fondling and fooling with this car and vacuuming and washing and waxing and I'm just just oh I'm excited it's a blue metallic and it had it had a strange upholstery it wasn't quite right it was white but I lifted up the that floor was. mats and it wasn't that wasn't correct somebody had gotten a little creative and and I was vacuuming with it and all of a sudden the whole head of the vacuum cleaner goes right through the floor and I went and um, my, I don't know if you've ever had uh, a, an anxiety attack or anything, but my stomach got into a knot, came up into my throat, and I was just, and I didn't know what to do, and I was almost in tears, and my wife says, what's wrong, what's wrong? And I didn't want to tell her I'd made a bad purchase because I'd sold her car to get it. I drove back to the guy who sold me the car, and I said, you know, you told me this car uh, didn't have any rust in it. He says, well, uh, I'll give you your money back. I said, okay, but I want to think about it too, so let me, think, let me sleep on it. So... He uh, uh, took the car back, he gave my money, I went home, and, and instead of going out and finding another car, I said, I have to have this car. So the next day I go back, and he thought I was pulling a scam, so he had the car outside of his apartment. He had it chained around the axle to a telephone pole because he thought that I was scamming and I was going to come back and steal his car at night. And as it turned out, he gave me 500 bucks off the car. I bought my first Porsche for $4,000. I took it home, and then I proceeded to go right to the nearest body shop, chopped out the floor, and welded in a piece of steel. I didn't realize that they had correct floor pans at the time. <laughs> That's, that was the first That's really involvement in Porsches. Uh, you're involved in so many parts of the hobby. You love to race. You've been racing Porsches for like 10, 12 years now? Well, yeah, I got talked into going vintage racing. And I started out with a 56 Euro European coupe that belonged to uh, Max Stanley, the, the test pilot for the Flying Wings. And I remember going around turn eight, and guys were going by me, and I'm sitting there, and the car's going like this, shaking, because they're just rocking me as they go by. So I went back to my mechanic, and I said, Dick, I want to go fast, and I want to do this. And so he made the car really nice, and, and I spun five times the next time I went on the track. <laughs> Every corner, I was... <laughs> Uh, then they nicknamed me Spin Bata, and that's when I started with Porsches. Then in 1998, when Porsche was at the, uh, the Historics for their 50th anniversary, um, I was sitting up at the, the, the festival at the top, you know, the little gathering and, and award ceremony, if you want to call it, and, and, and I was wearing my Hawaiian shirt and my tam shanter and then all of a sudden, I hear the Monterey Cup this year is going to go to Bata Mataya, and I didn't hear it. And my friend Bob Kahn is just <laughs> elbowing me and says, Bata, Bata, what, 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 what are you talking about? He says, you just won the Monterey Cup. I said, what's the Monterey Cup? Oh my goodness. I had no idea. I've since found out that it's a pretty nice pretty thing nice to have. Yeah, and, and so uh, uh, the car was named after Rose, Testy Rosa, because Rose would get testy. Yeah, and, and also the likeness of Rose. Yeah, the picture on, of her on, on, the, on, car. on the car. And, and so now people look at the car, and they don't refer to it as a speedster. They say, how's testy? <laughs> and I said, go ask her.
<laughs> and there, she, there she is right there. And she's kind of got into it as well. So we created our own history. And it's, it's been really exciting. Can you kind of take us on a word's eye tour, okay. uh, walking through this magnificent house? But first off, when we walk through your glass front door, right. the first thing we see is right into your gallery. Yeah. You turn right to it, your front room, your living room. But if you look straight ahead... You have mirrored doors to the front door, so we don't have to go into any other house. We want to talk cars, we can come, right, come in here. right in here. So we just open the gallery door and walk right through into the gallery. And we come into the gallery, and we're immediately greeted by... Cars, some motorcycles, a lounge area with some vintage yes. furniture. Yes. My coffee table is made out of tires and wheels and glass on top. We have a tractor in here. We have marble sculptures. We took all of the drainage on the house, the patios, the roof water, and everything, and we plumbed it down underneath the house, under the ground, and we took it all the way down the hill, and we plumbed it so that the water would come through the front end of a 49 Buick Super, <laughs> through the grill, into the pond that we had designed and made, and we, we did it all natural, and it has goldfish and koi in there. And one of the things we have at the pond is we have a big, huge uh, bull. Stands about five feet high, and he's probably six, seven, eight feet long, made out of a 56 Dodge pickup truck. All the parts. The truck was chopped up and it was all welded together. And it's quite impressive. I mean, you've got brake shoes for the jaw and you've got, you know, leaf springs and you've got, you know, uh, drums and everything. It's all wired. And he's down there by the pond and appropriately, you know, he didn't make it to the water and he kind of just like frozen in time in, in this dry uh, rock bed. What a great place. Thanks for having us. Folks, uh, we'll be back with more Car Crazy right after this break. <laughs>